Peters are in Beijing this week for the Forum on China-Africa Cooperation, also known as FOCAR. Some experts on the continent's relations with the Far Eastern economic giant expect African countries to lobby for more Chinese investment, but analysts say China is increasingly focused on opposing the West, especially the United States. Darren Taylor reports from Johannesburg, South Africa. Everything that happens at the Forum on China-Africa Cooperation meeting, some analysts say, should be viewed through the lens of competition over Africa's resources between the world's two biggest powers, China and the United States. Africa's vast deposits of minerals and metals are critical to the world's future. Coltan, for example, is essential to making cell phones and computers. Others, including manganese, nickel and lithium, are crucial for renewable energy technology. The U.S. government calls China's influence in Africa malign, saying Beijing is advancing its own narrow commercial and geopolitical interests and undermining democracy on the continent. China denies this, saying it's boosting development in Africa while at the same time profiting from more trade. David Monnier of the Center for Africa-China Studies in Johannesburg expects the gathering, known as FOCAC, to demonstrate Beijing's desire for Africa to be on its side in its battle against what China calls Western hegemony. If you look at China's domestic, regional and global politics, you see major shifts. And I think those shifts will have a direct bearing on its relationship with Africa. The tensions between China, United States and the Western world has intensified. And Africa is also becoming that um, center of this geopolitics, political as well as economic. Quibus van Staden of the China Global South Project says President Xi Jinping's foreign policy is largely focused on creating a multipolar alliance in which Africa features strongly. China, he says, wants this forum to oppose institutions such as the United Nations and World Bank, which it considers to be unfairly dominated by Western powers. China is already Africa's largest trading partner, with trade topping $250 billion last year, according to United Nations and Chinese customs data. Many African countries owe China billions of dollars for huge infrastructure projects. To repay the loans, they sometimes have to cut spending on public services such as health care. Li Hanghui, a senior researcher at the German Institute of Development and Sustainability, says China has become very wary of criticism of its activities in Africa. The Chinese side actually pushing towards more collaboration between China and African countries on experience sharing uh, regarding poverty reduction. This is also how the Chinese side wants to share its model with the African side. He says China is softening its approach to Africa, while at the same time making sure its economic, political and security ties to the continent remain strong. For VOA News, I'm Darren Taylor in Johannesburg. The 2024 summit of the Forum on China-Africa Cooperation enters its second day today, Thursday, in Beijing, with African leaders looking for more Chinese investment, while Beijing seeks markets for its goods and Africa's natural resources. J.P. De Farm is a former U.S. Special Envoy for the Great Lakes and Sahel regions of Africa. He tells me the United States should always be concerned whenever a competitor like China makes inroads anywhere in the world. It certainly comes at an interesting time when increasingly we see even more competition between China and some of Africa's traditional partners in Europe and certainly the United States. And so what will be interesting is how China reacts to not only the competition, but also the fact that over the last decade, there's been a decline in after many years of increasing Chinese investment, there's actually been a decline, although it was a modest increase from the year before. Last year, the level of Chinese lending to Africa is half of what was a decade ago. And that's, you know, without counting inflation into the equation. So in terms of, uh, as you said, again, more and more African countries turning away from the viewpoint of the United States. Well, 
let's be honest. Uh, China does a very good job of engaging with African leaders. Already, you know, even before the summit formally opens, leaders from South Africa, the Democratic Republic of Congo, and even smaller countries like Mali and Djibouti have already had bilateral meetings with President Xi Jinping. We think back just two years to, ago to the U.S.-Africa Leaders Summit, and President Biden didn't have any bilaterals. Uh, he had some small group meetings, but didn't have bilaterals. So the, the level of engagement is very high. So there's a lot to be said for Chinese engagement. On the other hand, for African countries that are in need of development finance, the reality is coming out of the pandemic with a slower recovery than anticipated, China's not in a position to do the same things that it did, you know, just a few years ago. Is this something that you think the United States uh, should be concerned about? Well, I think we should always be concerned whenever a country that is a near peer competitor makes inroads anywhere in the world and certainly someplace as strategic as Africa with not only the critical mineral resources there, but the human capital. You know, the fact that in you know, a few short years, one in four working age persons on the planet is going to be an African. So we should pay attention to China's inroads there. But at the the Chief of Defense Forces and Senior Presidential Advisor for Special Operations, General Mohosika Nerugawa, has met with the new Japanese Ambassador to Uganda, Sasayama Takuya, at the Special Forces Command Headquarters in Entebbe. General Kainerugawa welcomed the new ambassador to Uganda before they engaged in a private meeting to discuss bilateral cooperation between Uganda and Japan. The new ambassador replaced His Excellency Fukuzawa Hidemoto, who conducted his tour of duty in Uganda recently. Ambassador Takuya was accompanied by his deputy Tomo Tokar Yoshimura. During his previous meeting with the Japan's envoy, General Kainerugawa expressed his gratitude to his friend Ambassador Fukuzawa and the Japanese government for their significant contributions to Uganda's development, particularly in the areas of infrastructure development, agriculture, and support for refugees. <laughs> 